Here's what I think is the most effective shoulder workout I've ever designed using the most up-to-date scientific principles. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science, breaking down some shoulder science. Before we go into this shoulder workout, I want you to understand what likely makes it so effective. First, any good shoulder workout or workout for any muscle group is going to need to fit within your program. The best workout isn't worth a thing if it doesn't fit within your program. For instance, I could give you a deltoid destruction day that has you do 30 sets for your shoulders in a single session, gets you a nasty pump in your shoulders, makes you feel amazing. But if you had to do that every day of the week, or maybe even a couple times a day, that would be too much to handle. So your session needs to fit within your program and make sense. This session is designed to be something that you can repeat three to four times a week to maximize shoulder growth. Obviously, do not use the exact same exercises, rep ranges, and set schemes, but the amount of sets being performed is something you might be able to do two to four times a week. Since the front delts get hit pretty well during most pressing exercises, you may only need to target them directly through overhead pressing or front raises twice a week. Likewise, since the rear delts get hit reasonably well during most rowing and pull down exercises, you also likely only need to train them directly via isolation movements a couple of times a week. Since the side delts don't get hit quite as well during most exercises, you may need to train them three or four times a week to maximize hypertrophy. The second hallmark of an effective session is to limit redundancy. We want to make sure we target all of the musculature involved, the front delt, the side delt, and the rear delt. And they all have slightly different functions. And importantly, you get diminishing returns on how much training you do for a single muscle group in a given session. That means that your first set delivers the largest returns on muscle growth and each subsequent set diminishes in terms of how much additional muscle growth it gives you. As an example of this, an older meta-analysis by Krieger found this relationship. So we don't want to do a ton of volume for one muscle group or in the same exact movement pattern repeatedly within the same session at the expense of other muscle groups that we're also trying to target. As an example, doing the standing barbell overhead press followed by a seated dumbbell overhead press followed by some dumbbell front raises is going to give you a sickening front delt pump, but it's not going to give as much love to your side delts much less to your rear delts. Next, the best shoulder workout is going to need maximally effective rep ranges. And those are going to be between five and 50 reps per set. We'll mostly be training through the five to 15 rep range because there's some evidence performed by our own research group that suggests that people are generally most accurate at gauging how close to failure they are when they're training below 12 reps. So because training relatively close to failure is important for hypertrophy, we'll be biasing our rep ranges towards this area. However, there is also some evidence suggesting that when it comes to your overall program in a given training week, we want to train most muscle groups with a variety of rep ranges to maximize muscle growth. In other words, by doing a variety of rep ranges, you may get a slight edge in terms of how much muscle growth you see compared to just sticking to one rep range religiously. Next, a really effective shoulder workout is going to have maximally effective set volumes. Most of the research we have focuses on weekly set volumes and how those contribute to hypertrophy. So assuming we perform this session two to four times a week, we'll want somewhere between five and 10 sets for each head of the shoulders in this session. Indeed, some more recent studies on training volume comparing training volumes of over 20 sets a week per muscle to under 20 sets a week per muscle generally either find a slight benefit in favor of these super high volumes or find no difference. So if we're looking to maximize hypertrophy, we may need to do an excess of 20 sets per week per muscle. If you want a whole podcast episode breaking down this exact topic, check out the link above, aka the Strong by Science podcast episode on really high training volumes. We go through all the research on this topic. Next, for a really effective shoulder workout, we'll also want to take each set as close to failure as is productive. And based on a meta regression by Robinson and colleagues, the closer you take a set to failure, the more productive that set becomes for hypertrophy. However, this also causes more fatigue, and so if we go too close to failure too early in the session, that may have a knock-on effect later in that session on performance, and overall a negative effect on the hypertrophy. And so we'll be reserving failure or being very close to failure for later sets within an exercise and generally for later in the session. This will both let us go close to failure on certain sets and also maintain a good level of performance across the session. Next up, any good workout needs to have really solid or maximally effective exercises to target each muscle group. I have a whole series on that here and I'll have the video for shoulder exercises up here somewhere. But essentially, here's what we look for in a good shoulder exercise. First, the exercise we pick needs to target one of the primary functions of the muscle. 
The front delts, side delts, and rear delts all have slightly different functions, and so the best exercise for each is going to be different. Likewise, whatever exercise we do pick should have the target muscle as a limiting factor. And that's where isolation exercises are generally preferable over compound exercises. Third, whatever exercise we do pick should be stretch friendly. That is to say, there's three things we should pay attention to. One, it should put the target muscle into its stretched position. Two, it should have a fair amount of tension in that position. And three, ideally, the exercise we pick should be length and partial friendly. We have a growing body of evidence looking at the effects of length and partials, or being partial repetitions in the stretch position, to doing a full range of motion and its effects on hypertrophy, generally finding similar or better hypertrophy when doing length and partials as compared to a full range of motion. So, while it's not super clear cut yet, there is the potential for greater hypertrophy with length and partials, so that's something we want to consider as well in our exercise selection. Next, the exercises we pick should be less actually loaded versus more. So when we can avoid it, sitting down, for example, when doing a seated overhead press versus a standing overhead press may be preferable. It just reduces how much fatigue is generated for stabilizing muscle groups and increases the likelihood of the target muscle being the limiting factor. And finally, the exercises we do pick, especially for time constrained, but it's also just a bonus in general, should be time efficient. Exercises with less setup, like for example dumbbell exercises or stack loaded machine exercises, are generally superior in this regard to marble exercises. Next, we'll make sure to pick maximally effective rest times, and there's a few things we need to look for here. Generally, rest times of over 60 seconds appear to be more productive for hypertrophy on a per set basis compared to rest times of under 60 seconds. However, even though the potency of each set reduces as you take shorter rest times, you can simply make up for this by doing more sets in all likelihood. So there is some degree of personal preference here. But just keep in mind that the rest time you take between sets influences how effective each set is. So you'll need to vary your amount of sets that you do based on this. As a good rule of thumb, I would rest for about two minutes to maybe three minutes between most shoulder training sets. Potentially a bit more for compound exercises and a bit less for isolation exercises. As a good rule of thumb, I like to look at performance as a metric of did I rest for long enough? If my performance from set to set is similar, it's a good sign I've rested for long enough. Next, we'll want to order exercises, broadly speaking, in an order that maximizes maximizes performance across movements. If, for example, you find that training lateral raises before overhead pressing really messes with your overhead press performance, but doing overhead press first followed by lateral raises doesn't do the same to lateral raise performance, then maybe starting with overhead press first makes sense. As a final general heuristic, starting the session with compound movements is likely a good idea. Compound movements hit the most musculature, so when we're looking for overall effect on making a physique better and bigger, that is a good heuristic. With that being said, when it comes to shoulder training, for a lot of people, especially if you're training them two to four times a week, that will be done after your chest and back work. Ultimately, compound chest and back work target your shoulders to an extent as well, but the other way around doesn't apply as much. So chest and back compound work is more compound in nature than most shoulder training. The final component that makes a good shoulder workout is using good technique on all exercises. Let me break down what that means according to our most recent review paper. First, you want to make sure you're emphasizing long muscle lengths. There's a growing body of evidence suggesting that the length of position is important for hypertrophy. So, at the very least, use a full range of motion, making sure not to avoid that loaded stretch, and if you want to emphasize the loaded stretch even more, you could perform length and partials. Next, as far as tempo goes, your repetitions can last anywhere between 2 and 8 seconds. Generally, I think your eccentric should take at least 1 or 2 seconds to maximize hypertrophy, and your concentric should be performed explosively. We may want to pause in a lengthened position to simply spend more time in that loaded stretch, but broadly speaking, there is a range of tempos that maximize hypertrophy, with reps taking between 2 and 8 seconds. The next component of really effective technique is that it minimizes involvement of non-target muscle groups. For example, when you're doing lateral raises, try not to use your hips, as this would reduce the likelihood of your side delts being a limiting factor, and generally just causes a bit more fatigue for your overall body than is required or beneficial for the target muscle. With that being said, we don't have any direct research on this yet, although we are planning a study actually looking at the concept of one group cheating on their whole program and one group being super strict, and seeing which group makes better gains when they're given the same program, with the only difference being how much they're cheating or being strict. But on principle, cheating likely does not increase stimulus. Finally, when it comes to direct studies looking at shoulder growth from different exercises and what have you, the unfortunate news is that we don't have any direct studies. Measuring shoulder growth is relatively tricky, so no studies to my knowledge have really looked at this. However, the good news is that all these principles I just mentioned seem to apply across the board to a variety of muscle groups, so it would make sense that those principles are generalizable 
to the shoulders as well. And without further ado, let me give you the ultimate shoulder workout according to the scientific principles that I'm aware of. We'll start the workout with a front delt exercise. I recommend the seated dumbbell overhead press or the machine overhead press. We'll be performing this for three to five sets of five to 10 repetitions, taking the first set to about two reps in reserve and the last set all the way to failure. Between sets for this exercise, rest for about two to three minutes or however long it takes for you to maintain a similar level of performance from set to set. These exercises target mostly front delts through shoulder flexion and some side delts through shoulder flexion and abduction. Why did I pick the seated dumbbell overhead press and the machine overhead press as the best exercises for the front delts? Well, for one, they are highly time efficient. Dumbbells and stack loaded machines are essentially plug and play, meaning that you can simply take the weight and get started with your set. There is minimum setup required and there is no loading of a barbell required. Next, as I mentioned earlier, one one thing that makes an exercise slightly better is removing the actual loading component. By sitting down, we are removing how much stabilizing is going on from the spinal extensors and the lower body in general. And finally, all of these get you a decent stretch, provided you have a decent machine. But you can get a decent stretch in your front delts and side delts and your triceps, and they're also length and partial friendly. You can simply perform length and partials. I like to go up to about 90 degrees on my elbow angle. Once we've performed this overhead pressing variation, we'll move on to our side delt exercise. We'll be performing the cable ladder raise, machine ladder raise, or the flat lying dumbbell raise. Do three to five sets with 10 to 20 repetitions, taking your first set to about two repetitions in reserve, and your last set all the way to failure. Between sets, rest for about one to two minutes, or however long it takes for you to recover your performance. If you're doing the cable ladder raise or the dumbbell ladder raise where you have to do your arms separately, you likely don't need to rest for very long between doing arms. I personally just go from one to the other without resting. All three of these exercises are usually solid options. If you have a good machine, it's a good option. But in general, I think the cable ladder raise and the flat lying side raise are even better options. Importantly, all three of these variations get you a good stretch and place more tension in that loaded stretch position compared to a traditional ladder raise performed with dumbbells. Additionally, the cable ladder raise and the flat lying side raise provide a greater stretch in terms of position by allowing your arm to come across your body a little bit. With a cable variation, try setting up the cable at hand height to maximize the load in the stretch position. With the flat lying side raise, I like to go from my arm being just past the bench to my arm being just about parallel with the ground. This is a very stretch heavy movement. The resistance will be greatest when your arm is parallel to the ground, which is usually the easiest position during a traditional dumbbell lateral raise. It's a very partial, very stretch heavy lift. And importantly, all three of these variations are very length and partial friendly. Which exercise you pick should be down to how good the machine you have is, whether you prioritize time efficiency with the machine being the most time efficient on account of being bilateral, or whether you like doing the cables more, etc, etc. But all three are great options. And finally, to round out the shoulder workout, we'll be doing a rear delt heavy exercise. We've trained the front delts, we've trained the side delts, all that remains is the rear delts. I think the single best exercise to do in this case is the cable rear delt crossover. Perform three to five sets of 20 to 30 repetitions, taking the first set to about two repetitions in reserve, and the last set all the way to failure. Between sets, take about one to two minutes of rest, or however long you feel it takes you to recover your performance set to set. You can do these either single arm or bilaterally. I personally like doing them bilaterally to save time, but it is up to you. I don't think the slight degree of deviation from being horizontal makes a huge difference in how your rear delts will grow, so I don't think you'll end up with one super jacked rear delt and the other being tiny. Why do I like this exercise? Well, I think it'll deliver you a better rear delt stretch than any other exercise you've ever felt. Pretty much anyone I've ever taken through these feels their rear delts like never before. It makes a lot of sense as far as the positions involved. You can set up the exercise to have plenty of tension in that loaded stretch. You can progress week to week by adding reps. And overall, I just think it's the single best rear delt exercise. It also doesn't suffer the limitation of bent over rear delt dumbbell flies, where you're involving your hip extensors and lower back for no apparently good reason. This exercise is also very length and partial friendly, where I just go until my arms are directly in front of me. Now, if you were doubling up, let's say for example, you only do one or two shoulder workouts a week, or if you're specializing on your shoulders overall or in one specific head, you could add more exercise within this workout. But if you're not specializing and you're training your shoulders two or three times a week, I think you can leave it here. So we've effectively hit the front delt, the side delt, and the rear delt. Repeat this session with some minor variations in exercise selection and rep ranges, etc. across the week, 
and you'll have a solid routine. Before we end the video, let's quickly go through a checklist and make sure that we've hit every component of an optimal session effectively. First, we've limited redundancy by including a variety of rep ranges across the exercises and having one exercise for each muscle involved. Second, we've made sure to incorporate rep ranges between 5 and 50 with a bias towards the rep ranges of 5 to 15 or so. If you repeat this session two to four times a week, you will be in a really effective volume range for your shoulders. So we've had a pretty effective per session volume as well. Next, by taking the first set of an exercise a little bit further from failure and then gradually inching closer to failure and generally following the structure throughout the session will likely retain a good level of performance while also getting the benefits of going a bit closer to failure on some sets. We've made sure that the exercises we picked are really effective for hypertrophy, picking some of my all-time favorites for shoulder growth. The rest times between sets are generally in excess of 60 seconds, which is supported by the research, and we're generally resting for as long as it takes between sets to retain a good level of performance. While exercise order isn't super important, we've generally structured it in a way that prioritizes compound movements first and heavier work first. And finally, we're using good technique on all exercises, using an effective tempo of between 2 and 8 seconds per rep, emphasizing the stretch position in terms of the range of motion used, and pausing in that loaded stretch, minimizing the involvement of non-target muscle groups and overall fatigue generated. And so, we've really hit all of the hallmarks of what makes a session really effective for hypertrophy. And that's why I think this might be the single best shoulder workout I've ever designed with scientific principles in mind. Give this session a shot and let me know what you think. If you made it this far, please consider commenting, liking, subscribing. Let me know how much you like the sweater. People always lose their mind over the sweater when it's on video, so let me know down below if you like it. By the way, not a complete pencil neck. This is just a double XL sweater. I swear, bro, please, please don't think I'm not jacked. It's very important. My physique has a direct relevance to how important my advice is and how credible I should be, so please don't think I'm not jacked. Here's your citation. Let me know down below if there's any other muscle groups you'd like to see me design an optimal workout for. I know like half of you aren't subscribed, so if you aren't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell as well. It helps out the channel. It helps me put out information just like in this video, and hopefully that helps you out in return. If you'd like me to coach you and deliver you optimal sessions for a variety of muscle groups and make you grow, hopefully like never before, check out the link above and I can become your coach. In the meantime, have a fantastic day. Hopefully you get up to something good and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Um...